Hello, today we are continuing to look at technological developments that affect our food choice and today, by the end of today, we will be able to explain how alternative proteins can impact on a consumer's food choice. So there are two alternative proteins that we're going to look at. First of all, we're going to look at microproteins, including corn, and then textured vegetable proteins, or TVP. A number of protein foods have been developed as meat substitutes that are particularly useful in vegetarian diets. So first of all, looking at microproteins. So microproteins are a corn, which is a registered trademark form of microprotein. It's made of tiny little fungus like mushroom, which is fermented and then mixed with egg whites to bind it together and flavours and then it's processed. Now because it's mixed with egg white, that means that it does contain egg, which might be unsuitable for vegans. However, some advantages include that um, the texture and nutritional value are not changed by freezing or cooking. It also provides us with a good source of NSP or dietary fibre. It's easy to use. You can literally throw it into a sauce. You can cook it just the same as you would any other form of meat. It cooks very similar. Uh, it is a good source of protein and it may be used as a replacement for meat. Uh, it's low in fat and contains no animal saturated fats at all. However, it does not contain any vitamin B12 and this is something that vegetarians and vegans do lack. So vegetarians who have this product might have to gain their vitamin B12 and take from somewhere else. And like I said, because it contains egg white, it means it will make them unsuitable for vegans. Textured vegetable proteins, tea or otherwise known as TVP, is made from soya bean flour that has had its oil removed. And the soya bean flour is mixed into a dough with water and then through a process where it's dried out and made into different shapes that look like mince or chunks so that it's very similar as, again, resembles meat. It needs to be mixed with water before use, which tends to make it less popular than corn where you can just uh, cook it straight out the bag. The advantages of this, and it's a very good source of high biological value protein because it's made from beans. It needs no special conditions, so it can be stored in a cupboard for several months as it is dried, just similar how you would store things like dried pasta or flour. It contains fibre and it's low in fat. Most TVP is fortified with iron and vit that vitamin B12 that corn lacks. It's also a lot less expensive than meat, um, so it can also be mixed with meat to bulk out the product. And by doing that, if you have half a uh, mince textured proteins um, and you've got mince from a cow, um, by mixing them together in your dish, you would be reducing your total saturated fat content of that dish overall while still getting the, the same level of proteins but also saving money. The disadvantages include it can be lacking in flavour unless it's used within something and corn can be quite similar to that. So unless you're cooking it in a sauce like a chilli or, or a gravy or a curry, then it can tend to be quite lacking in flavour. So usually we would say that these textured vegetable proteins in corn would absorb the flavours of whatever it's cooked with. So it has a different texture to meat, which some people would find off-putting um, because of that. And that is us, guys. Um, you are now able to use these facts that you've got on alternative proteins and suggest how these either advantages or disadvantages would encourage or discourage consumers to choose that food product. And that's us.